Hello again, Set Free Church. Pastor James here. I am so glad to be here with you again today. This is uh, our third week uh, <laughs> that we're on quarantine or, or whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, social distancing, I think that's the, the new buzzword nowadays. But we are still dealing with this viral outbreak. But I tell you what, what is so wonderful is that God has given us this opportunity that we can come together and we can speak and we can, you can hear the word of God and we can be exhorted and we can communicate with one another and not be close to each other. That's really an amazing thing if you think about it. And I tell you, I just, I love, I say this every time, but I love to preach God's word. I love to teach God's word. You know, it's, it, it's a burden and it's, it's, it's a responsibility, but it's such a privilege to be able to do this. And I'm so glad that the technology allows us to come to you right where you're at. So we're going to have church this morning and we're going to get into some good word. And I tell you what, the Lord's been speaking to me this week. And, and dealing with my heart, and, and I'm going to talk about some of that. But to, the name of this message um, is, Does God Remove His Hand? Question mark. Does God Remove His Hand? Let's get into this a little bit, if you're ready to get in some word, because I am ready. Now, look at um, Hebrews, the 10th chapter with me, if you will. I'm going to, uh, let's see here. I got the 25th verse, but I'm going to back up to the 23rd verse because there's some interesting stuff going on here in this whole chapter, really. But I'm just going to touch on a little bit of this here. Um, so here, this is in the uh, Amplified Version at the moment. In verse 23, let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. How many of you know that he's trustworthy, he's reliable, that God's word doesn't return void? And when I stand on that, I may not know what tomorrow holds, but I do know who holds my tomorrow. And I know you do too if you love Jesus and you know God's word. Trustworthy and faithful to his word. Now, <clears throat> Let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to good deeds. Let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to good deeds. Many times we Christians, we, we fight, we backbite and all these things. And God's word says that we should encourage one another to love and good deeds. Man, that's an amazing thing. That is a beautiful thing. And let's, let's keep going on here. I'm going to kind of skip over to, uh, I'm in verse 25, but uh, I like the way the King James says this one. So I'm going, to, I'm going to jump over to King James Version, the 25th verse. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see here the day approaching. Wow. I like this. Now, first of all, let me say... Uh, uh, for, uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Well, we're not, we're not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. And proof of that is you, you're listening to this message right now. And we have, we've had to, things have been a little strange the last few weeks, I know. I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime. I've talked to my parents, people that are older than me, they haven't seen anything like this. So it's kind of a new area for everybody. And you know, we're, we, we believe in, I believe Pastor Steve said the other day, and I thought it was so good, that, um, you know, God raises up governments. And that uh, we are to, as much as we can, is to, to follow that government and, and to keep the law and, and to do good uh, with our leaders and to pray for them. And I, I think we should do that, and, and that's what we're doing here. We're, we're kind of keeping that. We're, we, we have found other ways that we can forsake not the assembling of ourselves together, and we're talking about the Word. We're preaching the Word. We're praying for people. A, lot, a number of y'all, I've talked to you on the phone this week and just encourage you, and many of you encourage me, and I just, man, I appreciate that so much. That's such an awesome thing to have people, to have a church family in your life like that. That's so good. And... 
Um, so we're not forsaking ourselves assembling together. We're just changing the way that we're meeting together, right? We're just changing the way we're having to do it for a little while. Because before you know it, we'll be back here together corporately again. It's all going to work out. God's still on the throne. Ain't none of it caught God by surprise. The goodness of God is still moving. I'm excited about what God's doing through this. Mm. So we say not to stumble of ourselves together, man of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. So exhorting, I like that word. That, that is such an interesting word um, to begin to break that down, especially in the original language, to um, exhort it. And, I, and I've str- I'm going to tell you, I struggled this week with what God wanted me to preach. And this is really not what I wanted to preach this week. And, and you'll see why as I get into it. I'm a pastor and I know people, uh, there's fear and there's anxiety going on right now. And, and I've given exhort, exhorting words the last few weeks. And, and, and I'm going to do that now. And I want to talk about um, what exhortation is and what it means. And then I'm going to pivot and move into some other areas. But we lay this ground first. Exhortation or exhorting. In the Greek word, this, the original language that this was in, um, Parakaleo. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. <coughs> the Greek word para, parakaleo. It's a compound word, which means um, it's a it's a, a combination of, of two separate words put together. That's a compound word. So the words are para and kaleo. So para means alongside, and kaleo means to call or to beckon, or to speak to someone. Now, when you put these two words together and you compound them together, it depicts someone who is right alongside of a person, urging him, beseeching him, begging him to make some kind of correct decision. So, very interesting. And I was looking this up and looking at the background of this word. And in the ancient Greek world, this word, just to give you some examples from history, this word was often used by military leaders before they sent troops into battle. That's interesting. Now, rather than hide from the painful reality of war, the leaders would summon their troops together and speak straightforwardly. We're talking, remember, we're talking about exhortation here. Speak straightforwardly with them about the potential dangers of the battlefield. The leaders would also tell their troops about the glories of winning a major victory. So they would be honest with them about what's going on. They would be honest with them about what's about to take place. And about some of the, the horrors of it and being straightforward about it. But look at this. Rather than ignore... The clear-cut dangers of battle, these officers came right alongside their troops and urged, exhorted, beseeched, and begged and pleaded with them to stand tall, to to throw their shoulders back and and look the enemy right in the eye and and stand toe-to-toe with the enemy and take him on where he's at and win a victory. Many times when we walk by faith, When we walk by faith and we do the will of God, sometimes places in the midst of spiritual battles, sometimes these battles aren't won quickly, are they? Sometimes they seem to drag on. Kind of of like what we're going through right now, kind of outside the church and in uh, society, what's going on. I know a lot of you are, you're you're so tired of this and, and and, you know, your nerves are becoming frazzled and, and many of you got kids at home and they're home from school and, and uh, you know, you can't go out to restaurants and you get takeout and all that kind of stuff. But it's just not the same, is it? Can't go see a movie. I know there's so much, but we need to exhort one another and beseech one another to move through this. We can be honest about what's going on. We can be honest about what is going on in our lives. Just like this. A definition of exhortation and, 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 and where it comes from in the Greek world. Many times when the enemy comes in like a flood, that's when the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against it. 
That is good right there. I'm reminded from uh, the Greek world in, in history what they call the, the Battle of Thermopylae Pass. And our leaders, they, they have likened this struggle we're in to, to a battle. And I'm going to pivot from this in a second, so hang with me. It says that, that uh, in the Greek world, there was a battle called Thermopylae Pass. And in, in this historical battle, uh, somewhere upwards around 300 men held off upwards of a million Persians simply by using backing into the past so that the numbers of the million, the enemy that was against them meant for nothing. They used what they had around them. Ah, oh, that's good right there. Also, let's, um, let's look at, uh, I want to pivot into Ezekiel uh, 33, chapter 33. Let's take a look at it, y'all. Let's see what the word's going to say. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the sons of your people who are exiled in Babylon and say to them, If I bring a sword on the land and the people of the land take one man from among them and make him their watchman. And he sees the sword coming on the land and he blows the trumpet and warns the people. Then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning and a sword comes and takes him away. His blood will be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be on himself. But if he had taken warning, he would have saved his life. But if the watchman, I'm in verse 6, sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any one of them, he's taken away because of his corruption and sin, but I will require his blood from the watchman's hand. Now this is interesting. This, this, this word came to me. I, God woke me up in the middle of the night and began to deal with my heart and began to deal with my spirit about some things. And, and I said, God, what is, what is this, God? Have you taken your hand off of this country? Uh, is our cup full? God said, I don't remove my hand from people or nations. I don't remove my hand. He said, but people and nations move away from my hand. And he said, that's what's happening here. Now I'm going to tell you, this, the COVID-19 and this viral outbreak, this, this is really, and I, I'm not trying to make light of it, but, but i got to tell you in the grand scheme of things, this is a very small, small thing that can happen very uh, um, the, 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 the veneer civilization is very thin, but this is a very small thing that can happen. That, and God is trying to get our attention. And, and, I, and I believe God's speaking to me. And he, be, he began to say, I, I said, what is this? He said, it's a message. He said, I am here. And I am seeing and I am watching. And judgment first starts at the house of God. And I'm going to tell you what he showed me. He's, he said, America is a country he's put his hand on and he's kept it. And the mercy and grace of God and the blessing of God has been so amazing here, I'm going to tell you. It's just unreal what God's done. But God told me, he said, I'm beginning to show you to try to wake up my people some things. He said, America, you've, you've murdered millions and millions, tens of millions of babies in the womb, we've become accepting of homosexuality. We, our, our, our people cohabitate, live with each other, not married to them. Men and women living together, having children out of wedlock, spitting in the face of God's definition of family and God's goodness saying we don't need that. We, we've asked God to, to, to leave our schools. We've took the Bible from our schools. We took prayer from our schools. And now we have kids shooting each other. Hmm. The land is filled with violence in many of our large cities, many of our neighborhoods, especially in the summertime. There's, there's, there, you can calculate and you can go and look at the statistics of the dead bodies of people killing one another. 
during these times. This is what God woke me up and burdened my heart about these things. And as these things have begun to happen, we as God's people, we've sat in our churches, we've sat, we've sat on our padded pews and mostly allowed it to happen. But God's mercy and God's goodness is so deep and so amazing. I believe He's given us a bit of a warning. I believe He's showing us some things. And he began, and I begin to repent before God. I said, God, help me to do what I can. I know it's so over, things are so overwhelming sometimes you don't know what you can do. Families have been broke up. Divorce permeates our society. Even within the church, even within Christians, we're up around 50, 60%. And I know things happen, folks. God, God, we're all sinners that need God's grace and needs God, God's love. And I need His forgiveness every day. But you know, God told me like the Canaanites. You know, when Abraham, God showed him what he was going to give his descendants in the future. God, uh, Abraham even saw the wickedness and he said, let me, let me go and destroy them, God. And, and God said, no. He said, I'm still dealing with them. Their cup's not full. I'm still dealing with them. I'm still reaching out to them. And I want them to be saved and I want them to be brought in. God is so good. And I pray that we will begin to be the watchman that God's called us to be. Just like He told Ezekiel, if you don't blow the horn, if you don't blow the trumpet when you see the sword coming on the land and you see these things and you don't blow the trumpet, He said, I'll hold you responsible. Oh. This is certainly one I wanted to preach. But no, God doesn't remove His hand as an answer to that question. But we people and nations, they move away from the hand of God sometimes. Oh, let, let's, let's look. Let's, let's, let's see where we're at. See where God's Word says we are. Are we, as men and women of God, are we being the watchman that God has called us to be? Have, are we being... Are, are we sounding that alarm? I know many times we're afraid. But God said, I'll hold you responsible. Don't be afraid. Speak my word. And I'm, I'm going to skip down here further in this chapter. There's some good stuff here, I'm telling y'all. Um, I'm in verse 11. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back. Change your way of thinking, it says. Turn back in repentance from evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Saying, turn back. Look at where you're at. He said, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He said, I want to reach them in my heart. Is burdened in that way today. Verse 26. You rely on your sword as your security. You commit outrageous and disgraceful acts. And each of you defiles his neighbor's wife. Should you then take possession of the land? These are questions God's asking His people. They come to you as people come and they sit before you as my people and they hear your words, but they do not practice them. For with their mouth they express loving devotion, but their heart goes after unlawful gain. Mm. They come before you and sit as my people. They hear your words, but they don't practice them. I said, God, I want to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. I want to see the, the sword come and have the courage to sound the alarm. And I, you know, as I said at the beginning of this, I, I, I'm not concerned about tomorrow. I know who holds tomorrow. I know, um, I've been through hard times. I, I, 
I know God sharpens you during those times. But as a nation and as Christians, we should repent and be doers of the word and be watchmen that sound the alarm without fear, without trembling. That we should know the word, that we should live for the Lord and should point these, not be afraid to point these things out in a nation of wickedness. Just like the inhabitants of Canaan as they sacrificed children to the God of Molech, which is a God, God of fertility, God of choice and fertility. We do the same thing today. By the tens of millions in the blood of, of those children cries out to God. Mm. I felt it in my heart in a strong way. Like I hadn't, maybe ever. I want to love people. I want to reach people with the love of God. And as I'm, <clears throat> we, we, our culture, one, one thing, another big thing, actually, that God spoke to my heart. I said, I said, uh, we, we're being warned because of our wickedness. And God spoke to me and said, it's not just because of the wickedness itself, but because you say wickedness is not wicked. That you say evil is good. And good is evil. It's okay living outside of wedlock. It's okay uh, um, perversion and homosexuality. And we're at an all-time high of kids being, being molested. It stinks before the nostrils of God. And it's something that we've got to begin to repent of and we've got to begin to call evil, evil and good, good. Because when we believe we're not doing anything wrong, oh my goodness, that's when the judgment of God is going to fall. When we'd rather come out of the closet than clean it. That might be a sign that God's hand and God's judgment is not far behind. It's not too late for us. It's not too late. God can move and God can work and God can use His people. And I'm going to close with a, uh, with a word here. And I'm going, to, I'm going to bring this message to a close. 2 Chronicles 7 and 13. And I know if you've been saved any length of time, you know this verse. I'm going to start with the third, I think the 13th verse. Yes. If I shut up the heaven so that no rain falls, or if I command locusts to devour land, or if I send pestilence and plague among my people, and my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek. In the Hebrew it means to crave, to require as necessary, as a necessity. Seek, crave, requires a necessity, my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from them, from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. God's word is telling us when his people that are called by his name will turn, will seek, will begin to crave the things of God as necessary. Oh, if you crave the things of God, the righteousness of the Lord, like you crave your next breath. That's real. Crave it as a necessity. Turn to my face. Turn from the wicked ways. You, you have to, you, repentance and turning away from is the key. We've forgotten in our society, in our modern society, we've had it good so long we've forgotten how to repent. We've forgotten how to call evil, evil. We've forgotten how to call good, good. We've forgotten how to call sin, sin. And, and, and God and the land is moved away from the hand of God. But all we've got to do, according to His Word, is turn from our wicked ways to seek His face. And He'll hear us from heaven. It says He'll hear, hear us and forgive the sin and heal the land. God healed His land. Heal this land that we're standing on that we love so much. Let me pray with you. And close in here. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
I thank you for the opportunity to speak your word. I thank you for those listening, God. I, God, I, 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 we, we repent before you, God, as a people. We repent before you as a nation, God. And God, we ask you to draw us with love and kindness. Oh, God, cleanse us, God, as a nation. Cleanse us, God, from our sin and the wickedness that we have allowed to come in. And, and God, I pray, Lord, that you'll begin to heal this land. That as you will send revival among your people, God. That you will use this situation that you've using to get our attention. That you will use it to bring people to you, God. And I know that people are ready to be saved that wasn't ready to be saved two or three weeks ago. And God, we ask you to heal us, God, and forgive us and heal the blood that's in our land, God, and the wickedness. And set us free from it, God. And as we obey your word, then let your word be the healing in our lives, God, and in our nation. We thank you for it and we praise you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you all for listening today. I sure appreciate it. I hope, I, I hope next week God will give me a little more, uh, little more encouraging word, I guess. But if you think about it, this is real encouraging too. God's moving and God's using us and God's speaking to us about what he needs us to do so that we miss and we can see, that, see our land healed and restored. And I thank you all. I bless you all in the name of the Lord today. You have a great Sunday. I love you all. See you.